Okay, everyone. Uh, I am now on Fort Peck, and I'm just getting into the section where I've got decisions, and I'm getting into the very large portion where the lake heads uh, north, northeast, mostly northeast, and the conventional wisdom is to hug the North Shore, which you're you're looking at here. Straight ahead is the North Shore. And then as you can see, it curves around and heads uh, northeast. Um, and I'll be going over some of these coolies that, have, that are almost a mile wide. So I'll be out here in the open water. Weather conditions have been pretty favorable today. I talked to uh, a fisherman. He confirmed what I suspected, which the weather is supposed to hold, hold up okay uh, today. So... You know, normally I would absolutely take the, uh, just follow the North Shore all the way around, but I'm giving serious consideration to, uh, to, to, uh, making a shortcut here. I can cut off probably three, four miles, and, uh, of course I'll have a big lake crossing once I get past that point there to get back to the North Shore, so, uh, this, these are the kinds of decisions that you have to make. The, the lake's been pretty calm, although now I'm getting into the larger open waters of Fort Peck, it's, it's actually gotten a little bit uh, more stirred up, but uh, nothing I don't think I can handle. So uh, these, this is just an example of the kind of decision that you have to make uh, when you're canoeing. And you know, I can I can go on the North Shore and and um, be a little bit more conservative. But even going on the North Shore, you still have some major uh, crossings. Uh, so uh, I think at this point the decision is I'm gonna. I'm going to head this way and uh, go ahead and take the shortcut. So I'll cross over to the uh, to the south uh, south shore. I'll clip the south shore and then I'll head back across the lake to the north shore, past the second or third coulee. If you're looking at the map. And then, uh, at that point, uh, I will remain on the North Shore for the remainder of my, probably my life, on Fort Peck. Uh, so, anyway, this is just uh, an example. And you can see how massive this lake, and it even opens up more once you get around the bend. It's uh, just a, uh, it's a huge, huge lake, and it's so remote. I've seen, I have seen a couple fishermen today. Uh, the that's encouraging with July 4th coming up there'll be more people on the on the lake barometric pressure has been pretty steady so uh, I think I should be okay if I get into anything too crazy I'll just stay on the south side and uh, and hang out there so uh, reporting from Fort Peck today is I know it's July 2nd I believe it's Wednesday July 2nd Okay, so you can see it's probably been about an hour since I uh, last reported. I successfully skirted, well, I'm going to be skirting the South Shore. I took my time. Uh, the winds actually picked up a little bit. The waves came in, which kind of gave me a little bit of an adrenaline rush, but I didn't really hit, hit it too hard because I know I now have to get back to the other shore, which, you know, I'll zoom in a little bit, but... I mean, this is like ocean pack. I mean, uh, friends, this isn't Lake Grapevine, you know. This ain't Lake Louisville. This is Fort Peck, and it's a beast. It really is a beast. I, uh, I'm not sure that uh, I should have done this, but uh, it will ultimately save time if I'm successful. If not, then we'll... Uh, We'll leave that for another time. And um, so I'm going to cross to the North Shore. It should take me a couple hours at least. It took me almost an hour to get over here. So uh, I am uh, going to go ahead and head out. Well, the wind is picking up, and the wind is coming out of the east which is a departure, typically it's been coming from the west, so it's starting to pick up. And
and uh, I obviously made it back to the North Shore as you can see behind me. That's where I came from on the South Shore. I cut over through that range and then cut over uh, to about right here and paddled like hell <laughs> to get back to the North Shore. It was uh, probably not the most prudent decision to make and you can't really tell. The waters look relatively calm from here but out there in the middle uh, they were white capping a little bit, so while well, they were white capping, so I was dealing with one to, to two foot uh, waves, uh, which made me a little bit nervous. Not the, the one to two foot waves, but uh, what's next? Is it going to be the two to three or three to four? But fortunately, uh, I, I made it safely to the North Shore and shaved off a few miles. Of course, I'm going against the wind, so. Uh, had it not been windy, I, who knows how much time I really saved or how many miles I, I actually cut off. Well, I definitely cut off miles, but how much time I saved is, uh, is unsure. Uh, I'm unsure, but uh, I did make it safely back to North Shore. I will not be doing any more lake crossings. It is exhilarating. Uh, once you get the, the adrenaline pump in and, and you realize what you're doing, and uh, you know, there were some boats out, so I felt relatively safe if anything did happen, but I, uh, I made it across safely. I knew it wasn't going to rain. It was just a matter of the wind. That's, that's the story of Fort Peck, is the, the wind, without question. Without question. So I'm about 25 miles from the marina, and I'm not sure if I'm going to make it to Pine Creek, which is 10 miles uh, from here and about 15 miles from the marina. That's where I had uh, intended to uh, make it tonight. It's about 3.50 now and given this uh, this wind and the fact I'm going against the wind, uh, I'm older now and still canoeing against the wind, yes, but uh, the fact I'm going to be canoeing against the wind, 10 miles seems like a short distance, but I've been humping it for, for six hours now, and yesterday was a long day, but uh, I'm going to get as far as I can, so I, I, I hope to make it to the uh, Pines Creek Recreation. You know, there's probably people there with soda and maybe, maybe an adult beverage, uh, perhaps some warm food, I don't know, but uh, that, uh, that, that always is a, an enticement, so not that you can expect that, but uh, the, the problem with the, the recreation camps, though, or the campgrounds, is it, it sounds like the perfect place to canoe into, but the reality is it's better to stealth camp because you're close to your boat, you don't have to lug your stuff a, a, a far distance. Uh, like last night, I, I stealth camped on a, on a point, it was great, you know, set up my tent within the feet of my boat getting your stuff in and out of the boats fine. On the campgrounds, usually your boats, uh, like at, at uh, Forchette, my boat was at the basically at the ramp, or rocks by the ramp, and to get your stuff back and forth, it's it's a bit of, a bit more of an ordeal. So, uh, but the overriding factor of uh, possible soda uh, outweighs the uh, the pain of having to carry stuff back and forth. So, fortunately, I did have my uh, my Lake Fort Peck. Uh, crossing. I went from North Shore to South Shore, back to North Shore, and survived. Anyway, so just uh, giving you an update on the crossing, and we'll talk to you soon.